All right. So once again, good, uh, good morning to our friends in the talent development profession, especially to our dear educators. So I'm seeing that we are currently at 204 participants and counting. So this is all, again as expected. So medyo paunahan talaga tayo when we go to uh, PSTD Learn From Home. So again, my name is Lawrence Ko and I'm very excited to, to hear uh, the sharing of our speaker and of course the experiences of, of our moderator for this morning and welcome to another Oplan Hope Learn From Home webinar brought to you by the Philippine Society for Talent Development. We're currently on our third week of our Learn From Home theme, DigiTeach, a month dedicated for our teachers and other professionals in the academy. So I'm seeing the chat, no? the, the usual, we're seeing a flood of, of greetings from people and let me just read some of them. Uh, but I don't think I can catch up to everything because it's so dami. So I'll start with Lucky Boy uh, and Toke. Greeting us a good morning. So good morning to you too. We also have Jessica, Dremlin, and Christine also greeting us a good morning. Good morning to everyone. We also have Daisy Sanchez from Mandaluyong City. Thank you for, for dialing in. And we'd also appreciate if others can also type in where they are currently dialing in. Because in the past, ang experience natin with Learn From Home is that we started concentration natin with we coming in from Luzon. And then slowly, we've had a lot of viewers and friends that are logging in from Visayas and also from Mindanao. All right. So again, we're still waiting for the rest of people to come filing in. We have around 1,100 registrants and we're expecting to get the room up to 500. That's the usual. So, pedyo pa unahan talaga tayo, as always here in Oplan Hope. So, again, we're also live via Zoom and Facebook through our page www.facebook.com/mypstd. So, if some of your friends or some of your colleagues will not be able to come in exactly on time, or if the, if we're already full at 500, which is the capacity of our Zoom room, please redirect them to www facebook.com slash mypstd and of course live stream recording of our previous learn from home sessions and immediately after we finish this particular session it's also going to be uploaded there so please feel free to view them at your leisure and like and share the learnings to your fellow talent development colleagues i'm seeing 76 new messages in the chat so we have one from Iligan City, Evangeline Vergara, good morning to you too. And Vilma Duca coming, joining in from Marilao, Bulacan. Good morning, good morning. Also we have one from Baguio City, Maria Glenda de la Peña. And also Segundo also coming in from Cebu. Very exciting. There's going to be a lot of sharing that will happen for, for this morning and people that's coming in from different parts of the Philippines would definitely add to the, to the value that we can take away from this morning's session. You can also follow us through some of our social media channels and our website. You can go to www.pstd.org or you can also go to, you can also go to, to YouTube and watch some of our uploaded videos in there. And of course, you can also scan the QR code so that it would immediately take you to our pages. And if you have any inquiries, you have any questions regarding PSTD, some of our programs and the things that we're offering, you can contact our professional team at programs at pstd.org. And now that we're at 11.04, and participants would be at 268. And let me check how many people are currently watching in Facebook Live. I think we have around 30, 30 people in, in Facebook. So we're currently at around more or less 300 participants all in all. And again, we're expecting 500. So now let us go to the demographic check. So if you are very familiar with Learn From Home, this is something that we always do so that we would know more about you. Okay, so Nat and Jen from our PSTD professional team will help us in launching the demographics Zoom poll for the day. And once it's up, I'm going to be reading the questions. There you go. So we have six questions this morning 
The first one is, are you a public or private school teacher? That's the first one. Of course, we are assuming that the majority, if not all of our viewers would come from the academe. The second one would be, are you currently teaching in the primary, secondary, tertiary, postgraduate, or at the vocational grade? The third one would be, at what particular age group do you belong? On the 20 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60, and score 61 to 70. And it's always wonderful and very great you know, for us to see a lot of educators that are in their 60s to 70s and still actively teaching at school and still doing the face-to-face -face with their students, such dedication and passion. So that's going to be question number three. Question number four would be the location of the school where you are employed. So we want to see the demographics if you're coming in from Luzon, from Visayas, or from Mindanao. Last, uh, the second to the last would be your gender. And then lastly is, were you able to attend the PSTD training needs analysis sprint last June 5, 2020? So all of the themes, all of the topics that we have for, for DigiTeach, they're all a product of the training needs analysis that we've done with thousands of, of public and private school teachers last June 5, 2020. Okay, so I think we can wait for 30 more seconds for Nat and Jen to share the results of our Zoom poll. Okay, so we still have majority of our attendees. It's going to be 64% coming in from the, from the public school system and 36% from private. Currently teaching in, medyo dikit tayo, no? With primary and secondary. Secondary teachers would be at 39% and primary teachers, pr primary grade would be at 33%. Of course, we also have people who are teaching at the university and colleges at 21%. Age group majority here would be at 31 to 40. And then the, the, in terms of where they are in the country, still an overwhelming majority, 78%. Are coming in from the zone. A majority of our teachers in the session today, 82% are, are female. And when asked if they were able to attend the TNA sprint, 65% uh, were not able to attend the TNA sprint. But no worries. I'm pretty sure that if you've attended uh, our earlier Learn From Home session, especially for DigiTeach, that uh, majority, if not all of them, were able, hopefully, were able to cater to the needs of our teachers, of our educators. All right. So while we wait for the rest of the participants to come filing in, I would like to invite everyone, of course, to join the society as a member and actively contribute to our vision of continually developing the, not only the workplace learning and performance improvement profession in the country, but also talent development in general. So before they enter the workforce, it's very important that we harness, we hone the talents of the, of the future members of the workforce at the earliest level, which is, of course, at the school or at the academe. So let me just go very quickly with, with this particular slide. You can join us either as an individual or a corporate member and receive benefits valued at almost twice as your membership contribution for the year. Some of them include free attendance to our monthly ET panels. I'm not sure if you were able to attend uh, our previous ET panels. That's what we call our general membership meetings. And corporate members are entitled to send two free delegates every month. If you're an individual member, you can also attend two of our paid webinars for free throughout the year, and that goes to five if you are a corporate member. Again, more details can be found at our website, which is www.pstd.org. Alternatively, you can also scan the QR code and it will take you directly to our page. At this point, we are currently at 306 participants in our Zoom room and a couple more. Let me check in our Facebook Live. We have around 35 to 40 in Facebook Live. So let me just, again, greet some of our very dedicated teachers. Oh, we have here Christina Po. Hello from New York. I'm not sure if this is in Cubao or in, in, in the US, but welcome. Christina. We also have Michelle Cruz. Good morning. 
with you from City of San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. Oh, so Christina g- gave us a quick reply from the US. Okay, so medyo hindi lang pala tayo here in the Philippines, no? Yung coverage and yung reach natin. We also have uh, teachers or talent developers calling in from different parts of the globe. All right. So and with that, I would now gladly introduce to you our moderator for for this morning. She is currently the chair of the marketing and advertising department of De La Salle University, co-author of the book titled Filipino Pride, where each page of the book gives you or gives the reader something that will make him or her appreciative and proud to be Filipino. This is something that is still available in Amazon and you can still order this book. Again, the title is Filipino Pride. She also facilitates a group of single parents that share stories of their daily struggles and help each other find meaning in their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow educators and teachers, let's give a warm welcome to this morning's Learn From Home moderator, Ms. Julie Balarbar. Good afternoon. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, Lawrence. Thank you very much. I'm also very excited regarding our topic for today. Um, actually, di ba nag-pre-meeting tayo? So I want to learn really more from our speaker. So let's, let me just introduce to her to the audience formally. Um, our speaker is an accredited assessor and team leader of the Philippine Quality Award and an assessor of the Philippine Quality Challenge of the Department of Trade and Industry. She is also a business excellence consultant with deep knowledge of both MBNQA and EFQM frameworks. Um, so if your schools need um, uh, a consultant for quality assurance, you can very well um, contact our speaker after this. Um, Lawrence would be glad to give you her details. Um, she's also accredited by the by PMAP Society of Fellows for Human Resource Management. And so why is she our speaker for today? It's because she has developed a framework for developing grateful hearts and also used to be the president of the Association for Appreciative Inquiry. So before we actually... Um, Make her go on board. I'd like you to, it's posted there, okay? What common questions do you ask your students? Do you ask your students who are not faring well in class? So I'm a professor. I've been a professor for 20 years at De La Salle University. And of course, we have students who do not do well in their assignments, in their projects. And the first thing I ask is, ano ba naging problema mo? What was your problem? Or how can I help you? So later on, we'll ask our speaker to say or comment whether that is an appreciative inquiry. So before any delay, so not to delay anymore, let us welcome our speaker for this morning, Ms. Allen Esguera. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. Uh-huh. So I would like to, to share my I'm sharing now my my slides. Can you see it now? Yeah. The title of sorry. So the title of my presentation today is Bringing Out the Best in Others Through Appreciative Inquiry. So appreciative inquiry or inquiry as per our guru of appreciative inquiry mentioned, but I will just use the word inquiry because that is more, that, that pronunciation is more familiar to us Filipinos. So I have just three objectives in this learning session. One is for me to introduce to you the concept of appreciative inquiry in a very practical way, and then provide practical application of appreciative inquiry and inspire participants to adopt an appreciative mindset. 
So I have seen that most of our participants, now our teachers, I really feel for you. And I have done also projects to help schools improve their competitiveness. So I know with the outcome outcomes, okay, required the, through the outcome-based education system, the more we need to be able to bring out the best in our students and of course in the people that matter to us. So activity first, activity first. So you can use your chat to participate in this activity and let's see. Okay, please just identify as many musical instruments as you can within 30 seconds. Okay, so, so easy. So the time it starts now. 1,001, 1,002, 1,001, 22, 23, 24, 25. Time's up. Okay, marami <laughs> pareha. Okay, it's 31. So let's see how many of you were able to write at least six. Wow, Daisy was able to write six. Sheila also. So you were able to identify a lot. And let's see. Let's see the key to correction. How many were able to identify right? Five. Okay, whoa, eight. That's very good. Nine. So far, nine is the, the highest. Seven. Well, oh my God, I can't believe it. Okay. So this is so nice. You can see that, that mus musical instruments bring joy to a lot of people. And the more musically inclined we are, the more we love them. So next exercise, what do you see in the picture? Can you also write down your chat? Okay, boy using musical instrument, musical instrument, saxophone, old man playing, musician, there's Wuma and there's Taylor Swift. Okay, so nice. So you have seen a lot from this picture. And as I look at your chat, most of the answers are something to do with, with musical instruments, okay? So appreciative inquiry is coming from, from a mental model. And our mental model defines the way we see the world. It shapes our actions and results. It is what we call reality. So we don't think from our own paradigm, actually. We look from the paradigm. Like eyeglasses with colored lenses, our mindset colors whatever we, re we perceive. So if we put on a pink 
glasses, we can see everything with a tinge of pink. So we are a product of what we believe in. And so what normally people believe in is that the world is hostile, requiring a constant struggle for survival. Error is not acceptable. And we need to dominate to be able to control our environment. There are things that exist us in a peace and independent state. And many of us are saying input equals output. Okay, where is this belief, inherent belief that, that we do have? And these particular beliefs conditioned us to see what is negative. Psychology said that our fight or flight response has been there for a long time and it's a product of our evolution. This fight or flight response predispose us to think negatively. But there was recent, recent research, just like that, the one that was published last April 19, 2018, that said that ramp of fight or flight response points to history of warfare for humans and genes. Because they said, if it is really something that is coming from evolution, something that we, the, uh, that all primates experience, then everyone must have it. But there are primates like macaws and some bonobos who do not have the same gene. And they concluded, based on their research, that human and chimpanzees evolve a more active fight or flight response compared to other primates, possibly in response to the threat of warfare. So, ano kasi tayo mga humans, di ba? We have experienced so much war, so much threats in our lives. And the tendency is, the more threats we have in our lives, the more the fight or flight response and negative beliefs about life is reinforced. So you can just imagine, in this period of pandemic, what type of belief do we now nurture in our hearts? What kind of mindset is being reinforced? So there is a better way of looking at all these things because a more life-giving view should be life is about invention, not survival. We're here to create and everything is a constant process of discovery and creating. Life is a great playground we make as we go. But based on research, 98% of us think negatively. Even our self-talk is 98% negative. So it takes a lot of consciousness on our part and choice to see what is good and celebrate what's good in our life. I will give you a story. These are real stories that I have come across. And one of these stories is very close to my heart. And let me, let me tell about this story. A 12-year-old girl who loved books received another book for her birthday, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Team. She loves the book so much and read it with so much enthusiasm. She is also eager to apply the principles, especially the first habit on be proactive. One day, she decided to go to her teacher and ask, Teacher, I noticed that not all my classmates like me, and I want to know how to improve. The teacher, eager to help her, took the time to have a special session for her in the class. She asked her to sit in front of the class, then told her classmates to get a piece of paper and write down everything that they don't like about her. After the student completed writing down, she then asked each of them to say to her the things they have written. 
when everyone has completed telling her every negative things about her, the teacher asks her to say sorry to the class. In between sobs, the girl tells them sorry for being a bad girl. The next day, the girl sat alone at lunch for no one wants to eat and talk with her anymore. This continued day after day after day. The other story involves a very active student that was asked to handle an important project for the school. He exerts pressures on his classmates to complete what they need to meet deadline of their class advisor. Some of his classmates went to the teacher to complain about how pushy he is. The teacher decided to improve how things are being handled. The next morning, he asked the project leader to sit in front of the class. He asked the class to tell the project leader all the things that he is doing wrong and forbid him to say anything while the students are venting their ire. When everyone has said their complaints, the teacher asks him to apologize and tell them how he will address each of their complaints. The next day, the boy feigned illness in order not to go to school. Eventually, she, I, he dropped from the school. Okay. So, meron daw na iiyak sa story. I have to read the story because I will be emotional if I don't read the story. So, if we can see from the two stories, right intention, wrong process of inquiry. So, very good ang intention nung dalawang, dalawang teachers. They really want to help. They, re they really want to improve the students, but the wrong process of inquiry made everything difficult for, this, for the two students. So it is important that we are in the right mindset. And if there is a takeaway that I would like you to get from this work workshop, our learning session, this is it. William James, the father of psychology said, the deepest principle of human nature is the craving to be appreciated. And if we are coming from that sense of appreciation, then our inquiry will be different. So positive emotions also create chains of interpersonal events the far-reaching results of which you may or may not get to see in person, but they are there happening. So, but we know that creating positive emotions in the process of asking questions is, dif is different when we have a different mindset, especially because we are predisposed to see what is negative. What is appreciation? So, based on the dictionary definition, appreciate means valuing the act of recognizing the best in people or the world around us. It involves affirming past and present strengths, successes, and potentials to perceive those things that give life, health, vitality, and excellence. So appreciation also means to increase in value, as in the economy has appreciated in value. So therefore, when we, we come from the space of appreciation, we immediately change something. We make the person in front of us appreciate in value. So Appreciative inquiry involves asking unconditional positive question that strengthens a system capacity to apprehend, anticipate, and heighten positive potential. It's coming from our belief 
that whatever it is that we are inquiring already exists even in a small degree and that we only need to amplify what is already there. So a very important principle is that the question open determines the answer. So in, that, in the example that I told earlier, when you ask the question, what you don't want about her? What are the wrong things done in the project? We are already determining the answer. If we ask something like that, we get a lot of negative adjectives in the process. So, we know what inquiry, we know what, what the right mindset is. So there are just two, two major tools for appreciative inquiry. And this is asking positive, appreciative questions. And the other one is narrating positive stories. So it's two very simple tools, but something that is very powerful if done in the right way and if done with the right mindset. Okay, so here we're going to demonstrate. So I would like you to think about the time you felt so accomplished and successful. So I will ask this question to Julie. Julie, when was the time you felt so accomplished and successful? Um, it was in like 2013 when I got the national award for from the Philippine Marketing Association award for marketing academic excellence. So for me, that was the time na I felt so accomplished after so many years of teaching. I get a national award. So yon yun yung sagot ko, Allen. You, wow. Okay. <laughs> what is it in the situation that make it really something that's, that stands out in your memory among the other accomplishments that you have done in Siguro, your life? Ano, it became a, kalagay kasi dito, di ba, peak experience. It became a peak experience because at that time, um, I was going through some personal struggles. So, para bang nagkaroon ng very positive reinforcement yung award na yon sa akin. So, parang it says na, okay, I'm, I'm doing good. You're, parang sinasabi niya, oh, Julie, um, you're doing well, you're doing good. In fact, it's not only the school that recognizes you, but yeah, a uh, national organization is, mm -hmm. is recognizing your efforts as a teacher. Kasi alam ko, okay, ang dami nating teachers dito, marami. Meron si Bu, Davao, Iligan, um, I know na it's not easy to be a teacher. So, it's a, ano ba, parang pampataba ng puso. So, yun. Thank you, Julie, for sharing. Now, in actual workshop, we process this. We do the discovery. We do the dream, design, and destiny in order for the person to be able to understand also, the dependable strength that the person can use over and over again to reinforce her or his capacity to do it again, to amplify it and make this available in other, other forms or activities or events in his or her life in the future. So, can you just imagine if you ask this question immediately, you take the person to what gives the person joy and happiness. And when we are in that state of mind, the more we hear the positive story, the more we look into the best things that is happening in our lives. So we get in touch with the positive core that is there 
and available to every one of us. Okay? So if you have a positive image of things, then it moves you to positive action. So positive image produces positive action. So let's go back to our example of the two students. So what are the things that the teacher could have asked to make it really something that will improve and will amplify the best in interest student that wants to improve? Anyone in the chat who care, who would care to ask a positive question related to that story? Okay, Julie, would you like to, to answer? Um, Sigur, I would ask, what do you, how, what are the good traits that you think you have? Especially for the mm -hmm. girls. I'm feeling ko ano yan eh, yung parang sa mga bull session sa school, na naganyan din ako nung bata ako, ba? Yung lahat na lang sila magsasabi ng, ng negative sa'yo, ba? So parang it's better if we ask like, oh, what do you think are your good traits or positive things about you instead of negative? Yes. So Cheryl also said the same thing. What are the positive things about her? What are the things that you like about her? Mm. Dami -dami. What are the strengths of the project leader? So very nice question that we 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 can ask about the, the story of the project leader. What are the positive positive uh, things that you can say about about the student? And then Trisha said, how can he or she improve? on his or her weakness. So that particular uh, question, although will, will generate suggestions from improvement, this is still coming from deficit, the, the deficit language, right? So we say there, there is something lacking, there is something wrong. So when we talk about about creating positive image, we need to really come from our experience of strength. So thank you so much for your answers. There are so many, many answers. Using appreciative inquiry, we have to, to look first at what are the things that we have to discover about the project leader, or the student, one of the things that, of course, we would like to discover are what are the strengths that these people have? Because we say in appreciative inquiry, whatever it is that we're looking for, it's already there. We only need to amplify it in order that the other things to improve need not interfere anymore with the, with the person. So you can say, oh, we would like to improve everyone and we would like to amplify what's there. So we can ask actually the whole class to start, start writing down what are the things that you like about school? What are the things that you like about your classmates? And what are the things that we would like to, to see in every each of us? And then that will be coming from appreciation. Okay, and then we can also ask the students to share their stories wherein they feel so happy in school. And then we can continue our inquiry and then until we have come up with things, things behavior that we, we, we will encourage and reinforce to each and every one in the class. 
So the same thing with the project manager, we would like to, to improve the way the student handles the project. And we know the strength of this and this person. And we, we can also identify where are we, where are we in this particular situation good at? How are, how are things moving? What are the things that you, you appreciate about, about the project? And then again, move to inquiry, identify the things that, that we can amplify to move the project better and at the same time guide the project leader. So we, when we have a very positive image of the environment, then we can move to positive action better. So there's a four Ds of appreciative inquiry that we can use in order to further deepen our inquiry, but suffice it to say that we really need to come from from that mindset of appreciation. So let's consider this, okay? Based on so many research, they said that when the daily dialogue between people is appreciative oriented, more people follow through with many more commitments than they do in an environment based on negative or deficit dialogue. So you can see how this will be very applicable whether it is in class or it is in an office environment. We do not do bull session in appreciative inquiry because when there's a bull, we know what's, what will follow, what will be the outcome. <laughs> so what we focus on expands. So when we focus on the goodness of life, we will have more of it. So I love the, the statement of Rick Warren on, this, on the power of our choice. And he said, rather than life being a series of hills and valleys, I believe that it's kind of like two rails on a railroad track. And at all times you will have something good and something bad going on. And no matter how good things are in your life, there is always something bad that needs to be worked on. And no matter how bad things are in your life, there is always something good you can think for. So it's up to you to choose whether you would like to focus on your problem or focus on your purpose. So a quality, a quality manager, manager once asked me, when we are doing appreciative inquiry in a semiconductor company, who looks at error in terms of parts per million. They said, what happened now to the error? What happened now to the negative? And I said, the same thing that is happening now to the positive. We know that both error and right things are in place, but in this, in this particular period, we, we decided to focus on all the errors. Now, let's also focus on what is right that is going on. And he got the point. So this, this quality manager has, has a physics, a doctorate in physics from a university in Japan. <laughs> and appreciative inquiry convinced him that there is a better way of looking at the world. So you know all the ease of fable, the dispute between wind and sun. And we know that the wind and the sun are metaphors for brute force versus persuasion and kindness. People respond better to kind words and encouragement. And if we are actually coming from the space of appreciation, then there is more gratitude in our life. So gratitude unfolds the goodness of life. It turns what we have into adapt and more. It turns denial into acceptance. It's chaos to order, confusion to clarity. So as you can see, 
when we appreciate life, we have more gratitude. And we, we have more gratitude about life. There is more joy and happiness. That environment, no matter where we are, we can always get into and be part of our positive form. So with that, I say thank you. And I think Julie can accept some questions. Yes, thank you very much, Alan. So I'm sure and daming ng comments dito, like si Cherry Baris shared an aha moment. Okay, sabi niya, well, it's whether you focus on your purpose versus your problem. So um, here's a question from Alejandro Carlos. How will you learn from your weakness if it's not pointed out? Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, in the process of inquiry, you can, you can also identify the things for improvement. Okay. But what we're, but, we're saying is we focus on strengths. When we, when we inquire, we first discover the strengths that can later help overcome all the things that we have improved. Another question that we ask, we can ask is, imagine why, what it might be. So, mm -hmm. so you have all of the strengths. So what are the possibilities to really make this as a towering strength for us? Because if we have all the towering strengths, actually by the process of inquiry, we don't need to talk already about weakness. The person will get it because life is a duality, right? If we focus on strengths, weakness, will not be a problem anymore. It is like, if we have so much joy, do you think fear will set in? Mm -hmm. So it will be on the background. It depends on what we use as a foreground. When we look for weaknesses, our, our foreground is weakness. And one thing about coming from a weakness, you feel demotivated, you feel empowered, disempowered, you feel bad about yourself and it can be a spiral to negativity and dis despair <laughs> okay yeah okay so um let me just read this it's from um daisy sanchez she said this is good not only for teachers but for parents elders managers as well totoo yon um, so, Alan, let's take a gaya nung kaninang example natin, nung umpisa, when, before I introduce to you, like, um, if a student has a problem, um, you don't ask, like, what was your problem or what was your difficulty, but you start with the question, like, what did you like about doing this project? Tama ba yun? Yes. Or what are the aspects yes. that you found easy yes. to do? So parang, parang sa math, di ba, condition mo siya, hindi madali ang math, hindi yan mahirap. Yes, mahira. yes. Ah, okay. Just like what we have experienced, di ba? Uh, I, we did the activity regarding the musical instrument. It's just 30 seconds of looking at those musical instruments and immediately, many of us were already conditioned to see a musician. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and mostly, Imagine with just that 30 seconds, there are so many also who said, Taylor Swift. So, <laughs> the, 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 the woman, there's a woman there in that oh, picture. Yeah, right? yeah. And again, there's, that's part of the conditioning. You see the woman as Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift is a musician, mm -mm. right? So mm -mm. connected for that. If 30 seconds can do that to us, can you just imagine lifetime mm -hmm. of thinking about what is wrong, what is negative, thinking about weaknesses and problems and issues. So no wonder we are having difficulty actually in, in situation of pandemic like this. Whenever I look at, at the Facebook and I saw the... the uh, 
uh, posting, I always give something positive to my to, to those who are writing to my FB friends because I know where they are coming from. And it takes also a lot of consciousness on my part to choose. It's really a matter of choice. Actually, and we need to be reminded that the greatest craving of human nature is the craving to be appreciated. And we need to also apply it to ourselves. Because oh, oh one of the things that we, what, that we do is the constant 98% negative thinking. We also need to appreciate ourselves so that we can also come from that state of gratitude when we talk to others. So here from Mylene Tablon, she said, I realized that to respond is the better way than to react. So correct. So um, let's think first how we're going to say our reaction and that let's be conscious that it is appreciative rather than negative. We have a question here from Armando De Jesus. Um, hindi daw, nalalambuan daw siya Alan, how can the areas for improvement be elicited when we focus on the positive? So similar to what I asked you, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. So in order to illustrate that further, I will use appreciative inquiry on the project. So the first one is asking the right question. We would like to improve the project and we are happy about the progress because this student is really focused on completing the project, right? And yeah. while in the class, we, we, can, we can say, so you can start actually by, by saying, I really appreciate how committed everyone is in the, in the project because I know you're, you're, you're doing very well in the, in the project. And I would like to, to, to know what are the things that are contributing to the, to the success of the project? And then the student can, can say a lot of things. And the next, the next part is asking on the dream. So if, if you are given the opportunity to make further difference in this project, what are the things that you're going to, to do and commit yourself to. And so the student can now say, oh, we would like to, to have better discussion when things are, are, are uh, up to the pun and things like that. So they can, they can state the improvement without you stating that this is something that is a weakness. Mm -hmm. And then next, we can design. Now, knowing all the things that can further, further make a difference in, in our project, then they can agree on things that they can commit and things that they can, they can add to the project. And then after that, you talk about oh, how are we going to implement this and make it a reality, okay. okay? So that is an example if you come from the appreciative. You don't need to push and say, what are the weaknesses? What are the negative things? What are the things you don't like about, about the project? Because remember, inquiry, just by inquiring, change already happened and it can be changed for the negative or change that will further improve where we are. So Alan, here's another question. I think we have a few mm -hmm. more minutes. Um, is it, basing on the story, was it the right move for the teacher to put the concerned student in a hot seat? So just like the situation in the <laughs> girl. Yeah, actually th that is, very damaging for the student. It took, it took actually counseling for the student to overcome mm -hmm. the trauma. And okay. so from the results itself, you know whether it is right or okay. wrong. So here from Divina Gracia Bandola, in conversation, it seems very comfortable to ask questions in a negative statement. 
nasa culture it needs more practice until it becomes your culture to always inquire the state of a person positively i think i agree with that um with your flight and fight yung subconscious is more negative because of the way we grew up and because of the way that uh, maybe our parents talk to us but tayo we can change that culture we can change that negative conditioning that may have happened to us when we were kids. So at uh-huh. least we, it can start with us. Yes. And and you know what? Stephen Kobe talks about input, output, and in between is a choice. And so if there is, there is an, a, a stimulus, just like what our wonderful participant said, we always have the choice to choose our response and how we do things. That is where true freedom lies. Not to be conditioned, not to do things automatically out of our experience, out of our mode of thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, um, a lot of the comments are actually thanking you um, and um, being appreciative of the time that you spent here with us today. And the topic that you make us aware of how we should think more positive. Um, it looks like from Daisy Sanchez, this looks like a skill found among guidance counselors. Would you agree, Alan, na may mga guidance, ganito yung skill nila? Mas skilled sila into this? Yes, yes. Uh, because that is really a requirement. Mm-hmm. Also, but of course they have other other techniques that the that they use. So, but in our normal conversation, we can we can use appreciative inquiry because sometimes, yung, yung guidance last records na natin. But as as facilitators, as teachers, we can already make a difference and we can make our outcomes okay for ito, ito last question na to nakalagay sabi dito um just curious can the teacher in the story be held liable for the impact to the student um Ye- <laughs> siguro ako yes. personally <laughs> oh kasi actually the student can complain okay mm-hmm. she can go to the guidance counselor she can go to let's say another teacher to complain about what happened to her Okay, so, um, yeah, for me, the, the teacher can be not held liable, but be made aware that she did something wrong, not, yeah, wrong or something negative. So, do you agree, Alan? Yes, and I would like to disclose, I am the mother of that, that <laughs> first student, no? So, at first, I was really so angry. I want to sue. I talked to the to the advisor, I talked to the principal, the owners of the school also talked to me. And my first impulse is really to file a court case until such time that I, I, I prayed. And you know what I did? That is the first time that I was able to conduct appreciative inquiry in the school. So instead of me going out of my way to sue or complain, I decided I would like to make a difference in the lives of my teachers. And the owners actually uh, organized a team building session. And the first part of the team building session is my one day workshop with them. And oh boy, I also learned a lot. And from since then, I am a believer of appreciative inquiry. Okay, thank you very much, Alan. We don't have any more time. So my take, my personal takeaway is that um, there are better ways of asking questions if we have a different mindset of being more positive. And yun meron nga akong favorite na quotation, if you need to choose between being right and being kind, choose to be kind. So I'll call on Lawrence for some announcements. Thank you again, Alan, and thank you to PSDT TD for um, allowing us to share in this uh, morning's session. Thank you so much, Alan and Julie. So let me just reshare my slides before we close 
the the session for uh, this particular morning. So, all right. So again, thank you, Julie, and thanks again, Alan, for sharing with us how to bring out the best in others through appreciative inquiry. I love the stories that you shared with us, and of course, some of the anecdotes that Julie shared as well. And uh, there's also a lot of learnings to to that that I had, and I'm pretty sure that, that the others uh, also uh, had with the inputs of the 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 people in the chat in, in the Q&A. And I'm sure that the 344 participants right now in Zoom and more than 60 in, in Facebook Live, so that's around 400 uh, live viewers for this morning, were able to learn and, and take away a lot of things from this particular session. And to close off the program, let me just give a few parting reminders from, from the society since we still have a couple of learning programs lined up for the remainder of July. This coming Thursday, July 23, we're going to have Rachita Saghal to, to give us the topic, the teacher as the coach, the mentor, and the counselor. And this is going to be moderated by Dr. Margarita Alvina Acosta. So that's going to be the second session of DigiTeach for the third week. And then on Friday, we're also going to have our Chillax with PSTD game night. So uh, I am inviting the, all of our teachers here in the Zoom room to join us, learn, play, and win. This is going to be, I believe, the third session of our Chillax with PSTD game night. So what we do there is we actually play games using different digital tools. And then we, at the tail end of the session, is we teach you or we share with you how to maximize those tools to gamify and to further engage the students in your classroom. Last but not the least would be we're all going to have our July Itipanan this coming July 30 with a title From Trainers to Writers, How to Be an Instructional Designer. This is going to be uh, delivered by uh, our resource speaker, Sara Gregorio, which is the founder of Learning Architects. All right, so I hope that all of you, I'm see, still seeing a lot of people in the chat. So thank you for staying with us. Thank you again, Julie, and thank you, Alan, for mm -hmm. spending an hour, more than an hour, since we've, we've done a lot of preparation for, for this particular webinar to be successful. And I'm very happy that uh, we've had a lot of positive responses mm -hmm. from our teachers. So once Lawrence, again, yes, please. Mm -mm. I just would like, I, I, I still see a lot of questions. Um, I would like to invite them to send their question to Grateful Hearts PH. I have an FB page and I will be there to answer additional questions, especially related to how do you turn questions you normally ask to your student into something that is positive. So I will be answering their other question through the Grateful Hearts web page in, in not web page, but FB page. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Alan and Julie. So once again, this is Lawrence Ko from the Philippine Society for Talent Development. And I look forward to seeing you in our upcoming Learning and Chillax sessions. Thanks again, Julie, Alan, and the rest of the PSTD professional team, and good afternoon. Okay, bye-bye.